What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash stories about Kevin. This story's called, Kevin works in a restaurant, or Kevin is the reason why I drink. So I've been stewing on this idea for a while about whether this guy is a Kevin or a different kind of special. I'll tell the story and let the audience decide. I was working at a casual fine dining restaurant, pretty classy considering my track record. I've worked a lot of bars, but this place sold $40 plates. I had, at the time, seven years experience and was just a fry cook because everyone else had more experience than me. I take my job very seriously and I'm very dedicated to my restaurant and my crew. Then along came Kevin. He was given the middle station, very prestigious. He was responsible for hundreds of dollars worth of prime protein every night. I was a bit resentful about him taking the position right away, considering I'd been asking to move on from Fry Station for over a year, but I figured I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. He knew maybe I could learn something from him. I noticed a few things were off. I think the first red flag was the bragging. Right out of the gate, this guy was talking himself up. He was a Red Seal chef. Red Seal is a globally recognized certification. It sets chefs apart from regular Joes. He was a manager at his day job in a different restaurant. He didn't need training because he's done all of this in other kitchens, and this started mere minutes into his first shift. I immediately noticed that he was a chatterbox. He could not stop talking, distracting my cooks, the servers, not noticing when his bills came in. After a while, we noticed he was actually pretty crappy at working grill, so we put him on saute, which he crashed and burned every night. Then he was a fry cook, salad cook, prep cook, until eventually he'd been trained on how to perform every single duty in the kitchen, because he was so bad at it while I'm still working fry. So here's the rundown, in episodic fashion. He came over to help me on fry, which was unnecessary and he got in the way. When I take food out of the fryer, I let it hang for 30 seconds to let the excess oil drip off the food. Kevin didn't do that. Nah man, he just shook the oil off directly over the top of the hot vent at the back of the fryer. That's where excess heat from the natural gas burner is vented. Every time he laid a hand on my basket, he filled the kitchen with smoke, which got into the food. For the next hour, we had complaints about food tasting burnt, and had to cop hundreds of dollars for our guests. Not to mention, he was risking a grease fire in the natural gas pipe, which could have turned the whole building into a crater. He was constantly buttering everything. About a week after he started, we started having grease fires under the grill every single night because of how much butter went onto everything. I saw him use one brush for raw shrimp, raw chicken, and cooked steaks, and it gets worse. I was responsible for burger buns, and after I'd given him the 10 buns he needed for his burgers, he buttered the outside of all of them. I threw them in the garbage and started new buns, while explaining to him that we don't do that here. I gave him the 10 new buns, turned my back for a second, and ran into him right behind me buttering my buns. <laughs> Tossed them, started the new ones, and said, dude, I have rivers of grease running down my hands because I touched those. Do not do that again. And can you guess what he did next? He sent out raw chicken three times in a night. Super busy Saturday night. He was working grill. We had just hired a new chef who was learning the ropes, helping Kevin on middle station, and owning that crap. I don't think I've ever seen someone learn that fast. So, Kevin has a chicken sandwich. The chicken breast gets sliced before it gets the cheese melted on it. So, that's a good time to check and see that it's fully cooked, if you need to. A good cook shouldn't have to cut it open to tell. Ten minutes later, expo manager dropped the sandwich in the window and says, Who cooked this? No one answered because Kevin will never admit to a mistake. But we all looked at him because that's his station. This chicken is several steps away from well done. I'd put that at about medium rare. Start a new one and make sure it's cooked all the way through. Oh, and the guest had finished half of it before the server noticed, so we sent out a replacement. It wasn't fully cooked. The server was checking it on the way to the table, turned right around, and came back. Chef told him to take a smoke break and made it himself. A couple hours later, we had slowed down. He had only one item, another chicken sandwich. It went out raw. He lost a steak in the microwave. I was in the back prepping a banquet for the next day's lunch with a coworker. Let's 
call her Brandy. I hear our chef, not the new hire guy, different chef. She's the one who hired Kevin. Yell, everyone online immediately. Kevin had sent out a whole table's worth of food except for one steak. He literally tried to send out a plate of mashed potatoes, veggies, and horseradish with no steak because he couldn't find it. So he figured, eh, whatever, and threw something over his shoulder because why not, right? Chef starts yelling at everyone, furious about the situation. Brandy notices that the light on the microwave is blinking, so she takes a look. He was tired of waiting for the grill to cook the steak and put it in the microwave. Oh my god. If there are any fellow kitchen workers reading this, I am so very sorry to fill your minds with such darkness. Hold on a second. Don't microwave meats to cook it, man. Oh, that poor steak. Oh no. Back to the story. Uh, he sent a weird ass message to an underage cook at 3 in the morning. Remember Brandy from before? She's 16. This is her first job. She and I worked side by side and we bought with the spirit of camaraderie that's common in kitchens. In the course of a year, I taught her almost everything I knew about kitchen work helped her through the hard times, kinda took her under my wing. One night as we were prepping in the back, she tells me Kevin had sent her a message the night before at 3am going, hey what you doing? And she was like, uh, going to bed? I have school tomorrow. I told her she should talk to a manager about that. She didn't and so I did. We agreed that because it didn't happen on the property or during business hours, they didn't have any recourse. But that really galvanized my feelings for him. Before he was just really annoying, skirting on dangerous, but now it's actually threatening. I started keeping a much closer eye on him after that. He asked me about cakes when Brandy was right there. Aside from salads, Brandy was also in charge of desserts. The night closer is responsible for pulling cakes from the freezer so we have enough defrosted for the next day. As I was checking over her dessert cooler and explaining some detail cleaning that I wanted, Kevin comes up, blocks her off, and asks me how many cakes I'll be using that night. Brandy pipes up, it is her station after all, and starts to answer and he holds up his hand to cut her off and says, nope, this question isn't for you. So I let him finish the question, took a step back and let her finish answering, didn't even say a word. His attitude was the absolute worst. I showed up at 4 o'clock. He started working at 4.30 and immediately started whining about how he has to make pasta portions. I told him, dude, you aren't getting paid to put on a uniform. We are all working and we're all doing it with a smile on our faces. You don't have to be here and frankly, and he cut me off and said, I don't want to hear about it. He didn't know crap about knife safety. We had noticed our knives were on their last leg and our chef, girl chef, the one that got mad about the microwave steak, decided that we needed new knives. Now, see, knives are my jam. They are my favorite part of the job. I love knives so very much, and a brand new set of knives made me so happy. But after a week, we started seeing cut grooves in the stainless steel counters. I started being super watchful anytime Kevin was in the building, and I found out that he wasn't using cutting boards for anything. I told him he had to. He said, yeah, okay. We had that conversation about six times, before he caught on. He didn't know any kind of safety. In this industry, we are often in close proximity with lots of dangerous stuff. Pots of boiling soup, pans of hot food, sharp knives, what have you. So we announce our presence. If you walk around a corner, you yell, corner. If you're carrying something hot, you say, hot corner. If you are behind someone, you say, behind. That sort of thing. Someone noticed he didn't do that and trained him on it. He walked behind everyone online with a hot pan didn't say a word. Brandy turned around and just about walked into him. He did that about four times in one night until the manager took him aside into the office and had the safety talk because he just wasn't listening. This is just scratching the surface. He was with us about five months and there's probably a lot I'm forgetting. This story is called Kevin the Pathological Liar. I discovered this subreddit about a week ago and after consulting with my fiance, decided that I ought to share some stories about my father. I was raised by a pathological liar style Kevin and a Kavina who I'm surprised has made it this far in life. I've been dealing with this for a lifetime and there are way, way, way too many stories to possibly write about in great length. So I decided to take some choice bits and 
share them with you all in bullet point form. Here we go! When I was in third grade, we were doing some kind of class project about heritage and ancestry or something. I don't remember. Part of the project was to find out about someone you're descended from and come back to class and talk about your ancestor. I went home and Kevin told me that we were direct descendants of Braveheart. Not William Wallace, Braveheart. He also said that we were direct descendants of William Tell. I went back to school and said this in front of the class. It went over about how you'd imagine it went over with the teacher. Kevin frequently served us rare chicken, but insisted that undercooked beef and steak was bad for you. So our steaks were tough and charred because he cooked them at the highest possible temperature in the oven. But the chicken was often pinkish or that not quite cooked whitish way chicken gets in the middle. My brother became vegetarian for a while because of the way Kevin cooked meat for us growing up and still has a mild aversion to it. Kevin's version of stroganoff was overcooked, unstrained hamburger with undercooked egg noodles and an entire tub of sour cream. No seasoning, I just get. Kevin also never strained spaghetti, so he had to fish spaghetti out of the pot with melted butter floating on the surface of the water. The spaghetti was left like this for hours and put in the fridge like that once dinner was finished. I have about a bajillion more examples of Kevin cuisine, but I feel like I should leave it at that. Oh, God. Kevin said that he was a Golden Gloves boxer. I later dated a guy whose father actually boxed. My ex's father and Kevin had a conversation about boxing. Kevin embarrassed himself, but Kevin's Kevinness inhibited him from realizing how embarrassing the situation actually was for him. Kevin was apparently a knee breaker for the mafia. He took my brother and I aside one night when I was like 19 and prefaced the conversation with, don't tell your mother you two, but, and described how he'd go after people who owed money to the mob and broke their knees. Brother and I later figured out that he started watching some mafia show on TV the night before. <laughs> Kevin apparently dated Christy Brinkley in college. Kevin went to the University of Illinois. Kevin described what my grandfather did to earn his medals in the war. He told me that my grandfather rode on the boats into Normandy Beach, scooped up injured people, brought them back to the boats, then turned around and went back to the beach to scoop up more injured people. I told someone this. The someone told me that what I was describing was the exact plot of some war movie. God damn it, Kevin again! Kevin claimed that his semester and a half of failed psych classes in college College qualified him in the mental health field. Kevin found out that I was self-harming in the ninth grade and his qualified approach to this was to keep me in my room with my door open, no privacy except to change, so that he could watch me 24-7 and ask me if I was feeling depressed or suicidal every day. And if I answered that I was feeling depressed, he would ask why. If I said it was because he was locking me in my freaking room every day, he said that this was my treatment and if I didn't like it, I could stop self-harming. He brainwashed me into believing that this was normal treatment and that if I told anyone that they would agree with him and not me. Kevin claimed that while he was outside smoking at the Star Trek convention that Michael Dorn approached him and said, Can you give me one of your cigarettes, man? My assistant won't let me have any. Also, apparently Kate Mulgrew asked him for heroin at this same convention. Kate Mulgrew was not one of the celebrities at this convention. One time, my brother had about half a joint and a bottle of vodka left over from a party. Kevin was unemployed at the time and home by himself while everyone else was at work. My brother came home and before he even went upstairs, Kevin ran up to him excitedly describing the home invasion that had transpired during the day. A Brazilian dude who spoke no English broke into the house and was rummaging around my brother's room, but don't worry, Kevin scared him away. Did you call the cops? We all asked. No need to call the cops. That guy won't be coming back. He knows I'll beat his ass. My brother realized eventually that the joint and the vodka were missing. This home invader invaded our home and specifically only stole half of a joint and a bottle of vodka which was upstairs in my brother's room. He even knew exactly where to look for it. I mean, what are the odds? I was very briefly on transitional assistance, food stamps and welfare when my daughter was born. Kevin told me that I owed him $100 when my first check came in. This $100 was for one can of 
formula that he offered to buy slash said I didn't have to pay back for and laundry that he did which I didn't ask for. I pointed out that those two favors didn't amount to $100 and the situation became that he would call the DTA and take my welfare away if I didn't give him the $100. I gave it to him just to make him shut up and he bought weed and a PS2 and sold the PS2 back to GameStop a week later for more weed. So he punked his daughter out of $100 that she needed for his granddaughter for drugs. Kevin once was looking out of the kitchen window while the rest of the family were conversing and shouted, Did you guys see that eagle? Holy crap, an eagle! An eagle! And ran outside shouting and pointing at the sky. There was no eagle. We still have no idea what that was about. Kevin works for a company that sets up bins throughout the town at, say, Donate Here. People donate, his company picks up the stuff in the bins and resells it. Kevin gets his pick of what's in the bins. I know it. My brother knows it. My extended family knows it, our friends and acquaintances all know it. Kevin still takes the things from the bins and tries to give them away as Christmas presents, like without washing them. As in, giving my cousin a shirt that had garbage juice on it and reeked of cigarette smoke, but claimed that he bought it because the tag was still on it. He feels that because the tag is on it, the item is automatically brand new and that he can tell people it's a new item, even if the item is clearly from like 1997. My aunt was not happy about the garbage shirt incident and called him out and Kevin was angry because my aunt should have been grateful that he thought of her son at Christmas time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.